Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. My name is Peter Kolozny, and I will be the instructor for uh, today's session. The topic for today is local web authentication. Now, before we get before we get to the local version of web authentication, I want to talk about. I, I would like to spend some time talking about the feature itself. So, about web authentication in general. Um, this technology is is an authentication solution that, that we can use um, in our network for either as a standalone um, solution or as a fallback method to another access a control mechanism such as that one X or uh, with or without Mac authentication bypass. Now, the typical applications for web authentication, uh, this is going to be the ability to give access to the uh, temporary users, like when you have some guests or contractors, maybe clients, you would want to give them temporary access to your network, a limited access, because this feature is going to not only provide the authentication a function of AAA, but also authorization. So we can restrict access to only certain parts of the network. Um, and we've got two types of uh, web authentication. One is called local, and the, the other one is known as central. As I said earlier, the focus for uh, today is going to be the local uh, web authentication. Uh, most people in the industry, they already know the major difference between the two, uh, which is where the authentication web page is hosted. So with uh, local web authentication, uh, this web page is going to be hosted on the uh, network access device. Uh, this can be our switch. Uh, this can be our uh, LAN controller. Uh, we will talk about a wired uh, local web authentication or just web authentication in wired networks uh, today. So I'm going to skip wireless part. This is uh, a topic for another session. Uh, so this is where the authentication web page is going to be hosted. Network access device, a switch, or LAN controller with the local version, or with uh, central web authentication, it's going to be our uh, AAA server uh, where uh, the web page is hosted. So this can be, uh, for example, ICE, because ICE supports uh, guest services. Um, this method is the recommended option, the central version, the Cisco recommended way of doing things because there is just one point in the network um, where you will be uh, making any changes, makes, um, gives you more scalability and streamlines the whole management administration versus with the local web authentication, the configuration is going to be, um, as we will see, most of the configuration is going to be done on the network access devices. So whenever you want to customize your website, you want to make some modifications, you will have to modify the configuration on all your NADs, which is not scalable. Um, okay, so I said that the major difference between the two features, the local and central web authentication, is that um, web website, where this website is hosted, by what device. Now, there are some other differences that not all people are aware of. So I would like to want, uh, I want to discuss this we will take a uh, we will take a look at the, those differences uh, right now, and then we will spend some time. I will be showing you a demonstration for a local wired local web authentication. How to configure this feature um, in your network? With uh, I'm going to be using ACS as a AAA server. But that doesn't really matter. Uh, when we get to this point, I will um, I will tell you the differences between ACS and ICE if you want to configure it on one. Um, appliance or just a, a AAA server versus another. Okay, so let's talk about uh, those differences between the two features. So we will have the local web authentication and the centralized solution. And we will take, we will talk specifically about the um, policy enforcement methods. Like, um, can I download, can I use the notable access list? with those features. Um, can I use, can I assign VLANs to the switch port? Or um, can I uh, perform change of authorization? And finally, the, uh, the configuration, where 
the vast, ma vast majority of the configuration is going to be uh, placed. Is it going to be my network access device or maybe my AAA server? Now, so with local level authentication, we can definitely use the downloadable access list, same as over here, but we cannot use, uh, we cannot assign any VLANs with this method. The, it doesn't support change of authorization and the configuration is going to be, most of the configuration is going to be done on the network access devices. Versus with central level authentication, as I said, recommended solution, we can also download or assign VLANs, uh, we can perform change of authorization, and we can, the, most of the configuration is going to be done on our uh, AAA server. So whenever you use local version of web authentication, you're not able to use uh, change of authorization, which has some severe implications because this automatically means that you will not be able to enforce policy based on the um, profiling services, and you will not be able to deploy, uh, to use NAC or just posture assessment uh, because uh, those two features, they heavily rely on change of authorization to enforce the policy. So uh, you will not be able to do a profiling, to use profiling or uh, perform posture assessment when you want to use uh, the local version of web app. But this is going to be the topic for <clears throat> this session. And once again, we will take a look at this in a, a wired network. Uh, the topology here is going to be really straightforward. And we will have just one switch um, with our PC. I'm going to be using a, a workstation, PC workstation, to test this, uh, this feature. Now, we will have uh, one router, which I will be using for as a destination. This guy is going to be um, hosting. Uh, this is going to be acting as a HTTP server. And we will also enable uh, Telnet um, services on this device. Uh, this is going to be the 10, this is 1025. Uh, technically, it's going to be VLAN 25, uh, the green one. It's 1025, excuse me, VLAN 25. And the subnet uh, I'm using here is 1025.25. Uh, 24 versus our AAA server is going to be located in a different VLAN. As I said, we will be using ACS. So this is going to be radius communication. Uh, ACS as a server, uh, VLAN 100 and another subnet 10110/24, where ACS is going to be this IP address. Router 10 uses dot 10. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this on the command line. Um, okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do here, we will focus on the fallback uh, solution for uh, this feature. So I will be showing you how to configure local level authentication as a fallback solution to ADU2.1x. And um, this is why I will start our configuration with uh, that one x So AAA in the model, and then two method lists that I need to enable for that one x one for authentication, one for authorization, uh, with the default method lists with radius. Then for authorization, this is going to be in the network service with radius, and our radius server is actually ACS, which is you know, 10, 1, 1, 100. And the key for communication is um, IP expert. Um, okay, what else I'm gonna I'm gonna I have to, I have to enable here. 
I need to create two SVIs on this switch. One is going to be to communicate with our ACS. So I'm going to put an SVI in VLAN 100. This is going to be uh, 10 1, 1, 1, And we will need another one uh, specifically for a web authentication. Because at some point when the user is going to start sending HTTP, HTTPS packets, the switch is supposed to uh, capture those and return a web page to the user. And this is why we need this um, IP address. It is technically possible to um, configure, if this was an access layer switch, uh, layer to switch, it is technically possible to configure a default route to a router that acts um, as a uh, default gateway for the VLAN. So it routes the traffic back to the clients. So the switch is going to be sending the, the, the website to the router. The router is going to be routing the website back for the switch to the end host. But it's definitely easier to use an SVI. So I will create another one um, in VLAN 25. And this is going to be also 130 over here. So two SVIs. Then one 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 thirty, and for this VLAN is gonna be, this is gonna be ten twenty five twenty five. One thirty. Okay, what else do I need for that one X authentication? I need to enable the framework globally. So system of that one X system of control, and then we can start configuring our. <coughs> Excuse me, our uh, switch port, which in our case is going to be gig 102. This is where I have my workstation connected to. So let's go to the switch port, and you know, this is an access port. So I should be use should be able to use the authentication commands. Let's configure the. You know, let's first thing. Let's shut the interface down. And let's configure um, that one X. So I will say, I said that this is going to be a fallback solution. So first thing, we will be trying to use that one X. And then if that one X times out, like for example, if our uh, contractors, when they don't have a supplicant installed, this is going to be our assumption here. Uh, then the next method is going to be um, tried, which is the web authentication. So local web authentication is configured on the as a fallback method over here. If you wanted to deploy centralized version, centralized solution, you wouldn't be using this option here because the central web authentication is configured on a AAA server. But for the local version, it's going to be over here. Web authentication. Now note that this is always going to be the last method, you cannot say that you want to use that one X, web authentication, and map. Um, it can only be used as a last resort solution. So I can say that one X map, web authentication, but I cannot say web authentication and something else, or that one X map, web authentication and something else. Okay, so I'm gonna skip map. We could, we could technically also enable Mac authentication bypass, but it's going to add some timeout to the when I will be configuring the uh, testing the feature. So I'm going to skip map. We will just use that one X and web authentication. Then the priority is going to be for that one X and then web authentication. This is the, there's going to be just one device behind the switch port. I want to use, I want to enable that one X on the port. Um, I could also say that if someone fails that one X authentication, so like our uh, guests, they have supplicant installed, but they don't have the credentials uh, they um, because they are not part of our, for example, Active Directory or whatever you use to authenticate the, the users, um, they will, when they fail authentication, uh, we will also fall back to the next method, so to web authentication. This will be that command which you will, which you would have to uh, specify over here. 
authentication event fail action next method. But this is not needed in our case because our workstation, the interface that I will be using to test this configuration is not uh, equipped with a supplicant. Okay, so what do we have so far on the port? Just three authentication statements. Now, another one is going to be to well, let's tune the timers first. Let's say that the timeout for transmission to this applicant is going to be just four seconds. Now, the reason that this timeout is important is that if that one X times out after your uh, DHCP uh, on the client, this is going to mean that uh, the, the user station will not obtain an IP address after that one X times out because DHCP client timed out earlier. And the problem with this is that the device will not get an IP address assigned. And since web authentication is a layer free solution, uh, you need to have an IP address for the feature to work on the client because you will be sending some HTTP packets over IP. So I want to tune the timeout so I can make sure that that one X will time out before my DHCP on the client. And I also need to specify that this switch is going to be the authenticator. So this is what we have so far. Um, the order, priority, that one X is enabled, the switch acts as an authenticator in the process, and the timeout was tuned. Now note that the VLAN assigned to the switch port is 25 and this is going to be our starting VLAN and also our final VLAN because there is no way, as I said earlier, to assign download VLANs from a AAA server with local web authentication. We will be only able to um, download an access list. And I will focus specifically on, the, on a low impact deployment configuration for that one X. So we will use that authentication open command and we will apply an access list to the port. Let's call it pre-auth, which stands for pre-authentication, where I will permit, you at least have to permit um, DHCP and DNS. And this access list is going to be applied to the port. This is, once again, low impact configuration. Now, technically, what the documentation tells you is that you should apply an access list to the fallback profile. And this is going to make perfect sense when you use, uh, when you are dealing with closed mode deployment, where all the traffic is dropped prior to um, successful authentication. Um, or uh, when the next method is being um, tried, like the, the fallback profile was um, activated, the access list in the fallback profile is going to be applied to the port. And this makes perfect sense for the closed mode. Now, on this particular version of code, um, it doesn't work really well because the switch allows all the traffic. And I, I'm pretty sure that this is a bug related to this code version. So I am showing you the low impact configuration where we will have an access list applied to the poll, to the port with open authentication feature enabled. And this access list allows uh, DHCP and DNS packets so the client can get an IP address and perform a resolution for a website it wants to reach. Well, you would all obviously also add some other uh, traffic that you want to allow for the port in your low impact deployment but this is which I will need to, uh, to enable uh, at minimum. Now, you could also apply a fallback access list, um, an access list in the fallback profile, but based on what the documentation tells us is that this port access list always take precedence over that fallback access list, so it doesn't really make sense to apply both. 
we can we can be uh, fine with just one access list yeah, that allows DNS, DHCP, uh, DHCP, DNS, and anything else that we may uh, what you may need for the low impact configuration. Okay, so this is my access list. IP access group pre alf inbound. And this is my switchboard configuration. So once again, authentication open was enabled. So this kind of like covers the that one x configuration. We can now move on and think about the configuration needed for just local web authentication. So I need to define at least two method lists more. One for the login service for authentication, one for authorization, and one to save the console. AAA authentication, login, and I need to use a default method list over here for web auth with radius. So I will also create another one that I will use to safeguard my console connection where I will say that I don't want to authenticate my console line. And one method list for authorization, uh, this time for authentication proxy, also with radius. Okay, I need to specify, let's see if we have specified our radius server. So this is our radius server, ACS once again. Now I need to enable uh, three additional things. One is to tell the switch that when uh, it is going to be given an, a downloadable access list, a name of the downloadable access list from a AAA server, it is supposed to request for its content and this is why we need this command, radius server VSA send authentication. So it is supposed to download that access list using a Cisco AV pair, which is vendor specific attribute. And then I need to enable device tracking. Um, this is so the switch can replace the source address from the access list, which is going to be Eddie. And any with the IP address of the client. And I also need to uh, enable HTTP and ideally also HTTPS servers. So IP HTTP secure server. Um, when you have both, you're running a crypto image. This switch is always going to be redirecting plain text HTTP uh, to the HTTPS. So as we will see later when I will be testing the feature, I will be trying to access um, a website using HTTP, but the um, yeah, we will get redirected to uh, with HTTPS. Okay, so what else do we need over here? Uh, I will now need to create a fallback profile uh, where I will nest my admission rule. So first thing, let's create this rule, IP admission, let's give it a name, wauth, and this is gonna be for the uh, HTTP proxy. Then I need to nest it in my fallback profile, let's call it W prof and my admission role is W out and the profile is going to be assigned to the interface. So you don't apply the admission role on the port, you apply a fallback profile. Uh, you can and you have to use this command authentication, fallback, and specify the profile name, which in our case was W prof. Uh, I believe that it was W W prof. This one over here. So this is what we need for um, web authentication. And the logic here is that when that one X times out, um, web authentication is going to kick in 
Now, this is still going to be deactivated, the, the fallback profile. The profile is only going to get activated when our client sends a DHCP or ARP packet. Now, there are some corner, corner cases when uh, this may not happen very soon. Like, for example, with low impact configuration when the client obtained an IP address using DHCP before that one X timed out because this is what our access list applied to the port allows DHCP traffic. Um, it also uh, requested a resolution for the default gateway. So it has a mapping in the ARP table. It will not be sending any DHCP ARP packets anymore. And this is when the, for that type of corner cases, uh, this is when that device tracking feature is, uh, is coming useful becomes really useful because every 30 seconds by default, it is going to be sending probes to our clients, to the devices that were detected that are connected to the switch ports. And when the probe is being sent, it is going to automatically activate the, this fallback profile, which means that at this point, when someone op opens up a browser, wants to connect using HTTP or HTTPS for the switch, the switch is going to redirect, uh, capture the HTTP packet and return a login website. But normally, if this was, for example, a closed mode deployment, your DHCP packets and ARP traffic would be blocked by the port um, unless the web authentication kicks in. So this wouldn't be really a problem because um, when, uh, you know, until that one X times out, no traffic is allowed for the port. Okay, so let's now go to the ACS and quickly configure our AAA server. So I will have to add my switch as a client and we will have to create the user for authentication and configure our authorization policy. So let's go out under network resources uh, devices and AAA clients. Let's add an entry for the switch. Cat free, which uses 10.1.1.30, and IP expert was the key. Now let's quickly go to the switch and test the communication uh, using radius. Some random credentials for username and password. And it says that the uh, authentication was rejected, which means that the devices can talk using radius. So this is this is perfectly fine. I put some random credentials so it will never be successful authentication. Okay, now my user, uh, let's call it a web user with a password of Cisco. Cisco, Cisco. Now my downloadable access list where I will say that let's only allow TCP packets to port. Uh, let's allow ICMP packets and TCP packets to port 3020. Web profile, uh, web ACL. Permit ICMP any any, and then TCP traffic to anyone port 3020. Then my authorization profile. So back to the policy elements, authorization profile for network access. Remember that this is radius. And let's add one. So I will have to specify my access list over here, and also one additional attribute value per, let's call it web profile. So the notable access list is my web ACL. And this additional attribute value is, uh, can be uh, sent using a Cisco VSA, one of the Cisco's VSA, um, which is called Cisco AV per. This one over here. And this is the privilege level 
attribute, it must be set to 15, so the switch can handle the uh, downloaded access list. So let's add it. Privilege level set to 15 and our downloadable access list. This is what we need in the profile for local web authentication. Okay, let's now go to the access policies. And based on the default configuration of service selection rules, we see that our radius communication is going to be validated against access service, against rule number one, which points to the, because we have a match over here, and this points to this access service, default network access, this one here. So identity policy, I want to use my local ACS database to authenticate the user, which is the default. And then under authorization, we will just need one rule to assign a profile to the user after successful authentication. So let's call it a web rule. Web out rule. Uh, first thing, let's customize the conditions here. Um, I will be using the simplest method of matching the connection by looking at the username. So this is going to be the only condition in this policy over here, based on the users. Web authorization rule. And this is when the user equals to web user, so the one that I have created previously. I want to assign him that profile. So save the changes. And let's now go ahead and uh, test this configuration. Okay, so this is my PC, um, which uses DHCP on the internal NIC. The that one x client uh, supplicant is disabled on this interface, so we will essentially have to wait until that one x times out. So so far, uh, let's say IP config renew. We should see that I will not be able to obtain an IP address using DHCP. Uh, let's um, bring up the port. <coughs> Excuse me. Even when I bring up the interface. Because until that one X times out, well, actually, in our case, no, we, we should be able to obtain an IP address even before that one X times out because we have that. Uh, this is the low impact configuration. So I should be able to get an IP address, uh, which I finally can. It's 10.25.25.1. Now, the switch says that initially we started with that one X authentication and it failed because there were no response, meaning that that one X finally timed out. So another method was selected, which is web authentication and web authentication is successful. So this is what the uh, what the switch tells me right now. Show authentication sessions, interface gig 102. So it says, I'm done with that one X. The process is over. I will not be trying to use that one X on this port um, again. Uh, I fall back to um, web authentication, the local version, and it says that it was successful. Now, this is somewhat misleading because we haven't still authenticated, but it essentially tells me that, uh, that once we get the uh, DHCP or our packet from the client from the point that it says it was successful, this profile is going to get activated. And the profile, once again, contains the admission rule, which is which is to enable authentication proxy, so that uh, login website. Now, I should also have an entry in the device tracking table for my PC, which I have. So when I now go back to the PC and try to 
open up a browser and connect through the switch. So let's say that I will be trying to get to 10, 25, 25, 10, my router, router 10, which is in the, in the same VLAN, in the same subnet. So the packet is going to be sent from the internal NIC to the switch. And the switch should intercept the traffic. And since the SVI was configured in VLAN 25, it is able to return a login website to the user. So web user says go. Now, let's at this point, maybe before I authenticate, uh, let's try to ping our router. So once again, this is the topology over here. We have PC with a dynamically assigned IP address in VLAN 25, which is also where we have our router. And this guy uses that 10. And at this point, we see that I am not able to ping it. I am not able to tell it to the router. And this is all because of that pre-authentication access list that only allows DHCP and DNS. So what's going to happen when I now authenticate? Um, let's go to the PC. Let's send those credentials. It wants to redirect me using HTTPS and says that authentication is successful. And when I now try to ping, we see I am able to do this when I try to telnet over a standard port, I am not able to do this. But if, try, if I try to telnet over port 3020, uh, we should see that we have uh, connectivity here. Assuming that I have configured everything correctly on the on the on the ACS, let's let's go to the switch and say show access list. Okay, so it says that this is access list that was downloaded from the uh, from the ACS and it says permit TCP any any equal for the 23. I put 23 over here. Let's go to the to the line on the device, line BTY, let's see, free, rotary 23, and let's try to tell it over this port. Okay, so we see that we have connectivity. I am able to access router, uh, router 10. Let's say line BTY, free, no login. Uh, let's just say, um, which will run include AAA. Username Cisco, password Cisco. I just want to show you that this is, in fact, router 10, which it is. And you can quickly verify this configuration. If I now say show authentication uh, sessions, it still shows me this information over here, but at some point it will expire and you'll have to use the show IP admission cache command to see the entry in the cache for your uh, clients. So when it says established, it means that the authentication was successful and that the access list was uh, downloaded for the user. Okay, now in case you have, in case you're looking for any type of other free training um, from our IP expert, from us, you can visit our YouTube or um, blog website for any type of promotions, news, um, and other stuff from IP expert. You can use the Facebook and Twitter websites. And finally, if you have any questions to this session, you know, local web authentication in wired environments, you can always reach me at 
P-I-O-T-R-K at IPExpert.com. Thank you for watching.